recent blow up of Smiling Friends has been fascinating to watch, to say the least. What started off as a throwaway show idea between two YouTube animators has now become a cultural phenomenon. And honestly, I can't complain. I'm getting ads for glep tables on Instagram, and my friend group now all have matching profile pictures. So do with that information what you will. Regardless, the show is good and deserves its success, and I think that every man, woman, and child should be forced to watch it given the opportunity. But as of late, I'm starting to see a very common take shared online by fans that I don't quite understand. And I've seen this discourse be reignited and recycled so many times with so many different fan bases over the years that I'm genuinely just starting to get pissed off at this point. Civil discussion aside, some of y'all just need to hit the fucking oil rig and it shows. So what is this opinion that's got me this fired up? Well, ladies and degenerates, it's the idea that as Smiling Friends becomes more collectively mainstream, the fan base is going to somehow quote unquote ruin it. I think objectively, this is a very close-minded, outdated, and frankly miserable way to view media, and I'm getting sick of hearing it. This video is going to exist as an explanation as to why I feel this way, speculation on why others feel the opposite, and an argument as to why this discourse, especially with Smiling Friends, goes completely against the show's entire philosophy. But before I can break that down, let's go back in time to when this take first originated in 2017. Kinda. The idea that fan bases can ruin things has existed long before Smiling Friends' release, with many pointing to Rick and Morty as a prime example. Of course, I could bring up the likes of FNAF or Undertale, but everyone remembers the Szechuan Sauce guy, the Intelligence Copy Pasta, Pickle Rick, etc. The vibes the show gave off from an outsider's perspective were absolutely horrendous, to say the least. No! And even just mentioning it in modern conversations nowadays will still get you some weird looks. As soon as Season 3 arrived, it seemed as if some irreparable damage was done to the show, with it only getting worse as time went on. Rick and Morty was deemed cringe by big internet, and everyone was sort of waned out into finding something more niche and badass to watch, like monkey bathing videos. And with Smiling Friends just having reached the end of its season 2 run, would one be wrong to assume something similar might happen to our funny blob show? I am here to tell you no, these fears are not unfounded, there will likely always be a large group of people that will get annoyed at anything that gains popularity, but probably not for the reason that you're thinking of. I mean, how do you guess a show like Adventure Time or Regular Show maintains such good spirits with the internet. It's because, at their core, these cartoons are fundamentally positive and foster a sense of community among their fans. Rick and Morty, however, is one of the most edgy, nihilistic, and unapologetically negative shows to ever be released on television. There is almost no line it won't cross, no way of life it won't poke fun at, and objectively tends to be a pretty miserable watch at times. Not to say that it's a bad show because of that, but by association, it does tend to attract very miserable people who can relate a lot to the Doomer messaging found within the show. And you can only judge and grandstand on people for so long before they start doing the same thing to you. We see this happen all the time online with content creators who bite off more than they can chew, and it's really no different here. Plus, this isn't just exclusive to Rick and Morty. Many adult cartoons fall into these same annoying stereotypes. It's just that Rick and Morty do it to an almost comic extreme. I'm talking swearing for the sake of swearing, excessive drug and alcohol usage, gore, and a heavy reliance on sex for plot points. And essentially, a lot of it does just boil down to shock humor. Not that there isn't an audience for it, or that adult shows can't cover adult topics, but generally it tends to be gimmicky and not very thought-provoking. But with that being said, Smiling Friends avoids a lot of these common pitfalls and acts almost as a borderline antithesis to everything Rick and Morty stands for. It throws nihilist viewpoints under the bus and opts for overwhelming positivity in the face of, well, everything. There's even a whole episode dedicated to jabbing at and explaining simply why these mindsets are dumb. People don't duck on Rick and Morty because it has too many fans or because it's gotten too popular. People dunk on Rick and Morty because it has stances and humor that tends to get very obnoxious and unlikable fast. The things the internet clowned Rick and Morty for in 2017 were all just symptoms of the bigger problem that people had with the show. Smiling Friends, on the other hand, doesn't try to convince you of any larger message besides finding happiness in life. The only people who would get mad at a message like that are those who probably aren't very happy with their own lives and want to project their misery onto everyone else. Kind of like the exact character arc of Rick Sanchez. You kinda get what I'm getting at here? <laughs> Though, for the sake of clarity, I would be lying if I said there wasn't a cringe-based subculture on the internet that enjoys dunking on people for liking things. Which brings me to my next segment, where I'm going to do the exact same thing to people who dislike what I like.
Okay, obviously I'm just kidding. If I see any of you fuckers clipping that out of context on my YouTube studio page, you're all collectively going in my air fryer. But to move on, I did want to show you a good example of why this kind of collective cringe culture doesn't work on Smiling Friends' audience. So I'd like to introduce to you a little video I stumbled upon last week called Smiling Friends Has a Problem. And I'll just let the video speak for itself. Even though said fan bases are quite large, they're very niche compared to a mainstream audience. And this is where the current problem with Smiling Friends arises, due to the, uh, mainstream audience being, uh, kinda cringe. I'm sure if you've been on the internet for a while, you have probably seen dozens of commentary videos like this pop up on your feed for different franchises in an attempt to criticize said fan base. But this is one of the first ones I've seen with such an overwhelmingly negative reception. Yeah, sure, it doesn't have many views, but typically the internet is pretty receptive to this kind of criticism. There are always gonna be D1 haters out there for everything, no matter where you go. But with Smiling Friends, people just don't seem to be engaging with them as often. I think the worst I've seen it get is on Twitter with people just scared that they're going to get eaten alive for simply liking the show, so they preemptively denounce their approval. But I've yet to see any actual examples of fans taking things too far. It's all just empty paranoia with no real backing so far. This video, however, does show off some examples of, I guess, uh, what this guy considers to be fans taking things too far. So for the sake of fairness, let's give this guy the benefit of the doubt and at least try to hear him out. And over the past few weeks, especially with the weekly release of season two episodes, I've noticed that a uh, certain website is being plagued by what I like to call Tumblr energy. Allow me to present some examples just for clarity. Apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur, the whole club was looking at her. Fuck. Shorty got low. Yeah, um, if you have any basic sense of internet culture, it's pretty obvious to determine that most, if not all the screen grabs this guy just used are satire made for the sole purposes of trying to get people mad and to make videos on it. The comments all echo this opinion as well, and I'm not entirely sure if the guy knew this and just wanted to cherry pick for the sake of his argument, or if he was genuinely unaware that it was satire. Because again, that could always be a possibility. Right? Majority of these Twitter examples are jokes and one was straight up a bot, LMAO. Okay, this I will throw my hands up for, like that one Martin Scorsese meme. My examples in the last video were absolute hog shit. I think it's because a lot of it involved people making fan art, but I didn't feel like, quite comfortable putting people on blast who took the time and effort to make fan art of their favorite show, even if I didn't like the fan art. So I kind of cherry picked some examples that were just text based. I know I used one art tweet as an example, but I did mention that it was pretty cozy. All right, you guys get one point so far. Okay, never mind. I guess he's pretty self aware. He knew exactly what he was doing and tried to manipulate his audience into believing false info. This also isn't even the only instance of this happening. Another guy attempted to make a 20 minute long video scrolling through Smiling Friends Twitter posts only for it to garner more negative feedback than the first one. Personally, I don't think the person who made this video had any negative intentions. A lot of the criticisms in this video are very surface level and pretty obviously not serious at all. They just basically make the soy face anytime they see gay fan art or anything that isn't just a typical drawing of the main cast. But the comments are very not positive to say the least. With a lot of them just accusing the uploader of being vaguely homophobic. And I mean, it's not like I can even say they're wrong, because that basically is the video's bit 60% of the time. But the point still stands that the majority of the internet isn't really on any type of crusade against Smiling Friends just yet, and that very, very small minority who are trying to manifest some kind of bad fan base within it don't really understand Smiling Friends to begin with. And to further demonstrate this point, I want to revisit the first guy's response that I briefly showed a clip from earlier and analyze it a bit further. God forbidden people to have fun without y'all saying it's cringe or weird. I fucking hate this argument, honestly. It reminds me of that cringe meme with the guy going, let people enjoy things. People can obviously enjoy things. I'm talking about over-obsessiveness to the point of just being weird. If you met the Bjork stalker, would you say he's allowed to enjoy what he likes, even though he was trying to fucking blow Bjork up? It's okay to do that, I guess, because we should just let people enjoy things. I wonder if there's a character in Smiling Friends based off of that guy. Point to me, fuck you. <laughs> Comparing a serial stalker who committed suicide live on camera to a few teenagers drawing fan art is a, what we like to call in the video essay business, a straw man fallacy. Yes, yes! The one AP English credit I got in high school is all worth it now. I can finally use Reddit debate buzzwords to make me sound smart on the internet. <laughs> Joking aside, this is an absolutely insane comparison. Nobody is stalking anyone. Nobody is doing anything illegal. I mean, I wonder if this guy has even seen most of the Smiling Friends fan art. It's all just characters and maid dresses and Charlie kissing Pim sometimes. Both being things that Charlie has actually done in the show, by the way. I'd hate to break it to you, man, but in this specific case, you are literally being the guy in the comic you don't like. I even went onto this guy's Twitter just for the sake of goofs and laughs, and one of the first things I found was reposted softcore hentai. 
folks, sometimes this YouTube shit just writes itself. Also, this video is not a free pass to go and harass or annoy this guy. Do not do that. I censored his name for a reason. This guy is just one in a million fucking people I'm criticizing. But to get back on track, obviously, this one guy isn't a 100% representation of somebody who doesn't like Smiling Friends' fan base. Maybe there is actually some crazy shit going on that I'm unaware of. And if there is, please fucking comment it so I can, I don't know, be aware. But yeah, for now, I'm utterly unconvinced. Maybe there will be some kind of inciting event that ruins the show for most people, but I'm not gonna make any bets anytime soon. This discourse didn't start with Smiling Friends, and I really doubt it's going to end here either, but I hope what you can realize from this video is that these ideas are often based on misunderstandings and misplaced negativity. Smiling Friends stands out as a show that promotes positivity and community, and its fan base reflects that. While there will always be critics, it's important to remember that your enjoyment of a show should come from your own experience. So the next time you find yourself caught up in a screaming match on Twitter about whether or not a fan base has ruined something, maybe take a step back and remember why you love it in the first place. Media is meant to be enjoyed, and it's okay to just hit that mute button and tune out the noise, and simply have fun with it for what it is. If you enjoyed this, I would recommend uh, checking out my other video about award shows where I talk about why critics' opinions don't matter in a larger scale. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and if you don't mind, I've got some Elden Ring DLC to get back to, so I'll catch you in the next one. In the out.